All right, I went to Target, I did my best, I got the stuff. Let's do this. Okay, today we're gonna talk about one, a giant defamation lawsuit against a number of queens, two, Adora Delano's long going spat with her management, and three, a copyright lawsuit brought against a unknown internet entity known as Reality TV Leaks that was leaking a bunch of All Stars 3 content before it ever aired. Oh, and I'm gonna become Trixie Mattel. Okay, and it should go fine because we both have the same like pallid Midwestern complexion and I have a lot of forehead real estate. So I'm hoping it, things will be fine. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN. Listen, later in this video, we're gonna be talking about the time a Drag Race fan leaked a bunch of Drag Race content before it aired for All Stars 3. And the irony is not lost on me that this video is sponsored by a VPN. But listen, there are a lot of really useful, non-nefarious things that you can do with a VPN. And in fact, Atlas VPN can help protect you against online crimes. So Atlas VPN is a virtual private private network, which makes all of your internet activity travel through an encrypted tunnel. This way it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers, and it hides your IP address. Atlas VPN protects you from pop-up ads, malware, and other spooky things on the internet. It also allows you to surf the web from anywhere in the world. So all of your streaming services, HBO, Netflix, they all have geo-specific restrictions because of licensing rights, which means that you can only see certain content in certain locations throughout the world. But using Atlas VPN, you can surf the internet as though you are in another country. So you can access these streaming services in other geographic locations that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. You wanna see something on the British version of Netflix? Now you can with Atlas VPN. I also love to use Atlas VPN because I am a person on the internet and it's important to me to be able to protect myself while I'm online. Plus it really creeps me out when I get hyper-targeted ads about stuff that I was just chatting with my friends about. Get the heck out of my head. And with Atlas VPN, you can get the best VPN deal on the market. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount Discount, meaning that you can get three years of Atlas VPN for $1.99 a month. That's an 82% discount just for you. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee. You can go to Atlas VPN and get your deal by clicking on the link in the description down below. Thanks Atlas VPN. All right, I'm doing her Trixie makeup on a budget video because <laughs> I'm a girl on a budget, okay? You do the little circles because you need to get under the hair and brush the hair straight up. The tea is this too, Christine. You have to get the disappearing purple. I got the disappearing purple. But of course they only sell it in three packs. So now I'm a lunatic, adult childless woman with three disappearing purple glue sticks in my possession. Any Minneapolis drag queens need some glue? I'll hand deliver it. Okay. I already hate this. She said to really go, f oh. <laughs> Ooh, my hairs don't wanna stay up like that. This is fucking disgusting. I get it though. I see what's happening. Things are getting flattened. Ugh. How is her so purple? How the f much is she putting on there that she's getting that intense of purple? Oh, there we go. Okay. You lick the glue because it makes that final layer really slick. I'm not licking the glue. Nope. There are lines we draw and that's one of them. Why is it peeling like that? All right, step one is already hard. Let's move on. We gotta set these puppies apparently. Because we have to set the glue and also this little bit of pigment in the powder helps start to be like your first coverage. I got white. I thought that's what we wanted. NYX Studio Photogenic Finishing Powder. Let's do it. Oh, that was a lot. <clears throat> What the f Already things aren't going well. How much powder is she using? How is she keeping it so concentrated on her brows? Ew, it's like crusty and dry. She's said all right. She's hardened. Apparently that was the wrong product, but here we are. All right, let's get into the first lawsuit. So first let's talk about Neverland Events and Artist Management versus Anthony Taylor et al. So let's talk about the parties. We got Neverland Events and Artist Management. They were started about a decade ago by this guy named Anthony DeFiore. He was a guy who like organized parties. I don't know, I'm old. Delete it old. Delete it old. I don't understand, but apparently there are people who do parties in clubs and you can turn that into a business. So then this guy did that in Chicago around 2012. And at one point this Neverland management company did manage Trixie, but I guess she dropped them or something. Very mysterious. This is super stay full coverage. This is wild. So I got the actual foundation in the shade that she has. 
we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I looked up the internet presence of this Neverland management company and like they got nothing. The website's non-existent and the Instagram hasn't had a post on it since October, 2019, which makes sense. I mean, a pandemic and uh, event company doesn't really go well together, but August, 2019 also happens to be the month that this lawsuit was filed. So, oh my God, it's so much. I mean, that eyebrow is not going anywhere, unfortunately. How do I make it go away? Okay. I mean, she's still there, but slightly less so. Kind of around and down. I needed more guidance on the shape. Trixie, it's all about shapes with Trixie. I mean, things are looking crusty. It's baby's first drag. What are you gonna do? Okay, that's a shape. She says, if we take a fluffy brush, it creates a gradient, but I'm, I don't know if that's what I'm experiencing here. Everything is wrong. I, I understand the general idea. Okay, I see it. I'm smelling what you're cooking, picking up what you're putting down, Miss Tracy, kind of. So we got Neverland as the plaintiff and they're suing eight different parties. And those include Pearl, Shea Coulee, The Vixen, and Kim Chi. Also named defendants include a Chicago law firm called Coolwin, Machio Pinto and Coolwin. Um, and then a YouTube drag queen named Jake Yance. Shea Coulee's boyfriend, Dan Poliak, and a drag queen named Bible Girl. So they're all being sued for defamation because a lot of queens started coming forward in early 2019, complaining that they weren't getting paid or have had other negative experiences with Neverland. Shea Coulee was kind of the first main one to come forward. She had receipts of non-payment, saying she never received any money for her gigs, showing conversations that she had had with people who had booked her gigs, saying that they had paid Neverland, but then her talking to Anthony and him saying they never got paid. So people are like, what the heck's going on? If they're making the money, but not paying it to the Queens, that's really shady, et cetera, et cetera. So Shea Coulee kind of set off this whole conversation. Okay, then Kim Chi shares Shay's posts and she was like, uh, yeah, this is all true. And then she lodged some like, allegations of her own, including that Anthony slash Neverland had ownership over the website with her name on it. Um, and then wouldn't give it back to her unless she paid them $20,000. So basically claiming that Anthony DeFiori was holding her website for ransom. And then the Vixen came forward on Twitter saying that Anthony DeFiori and Neverland was mishandling her merch and her business and telling lies and stuff. And then Bible Girl, who runs dragqueenmerch.com, which is a competitor of Neverland because they sell drag queen merch and so does Neverland. She comes forward and went off on Anthony and Neverland on Twitter saying that he spread lies about her company. Okay, so this all comes out and then Jake Yance, who is a YouTube drag queen, makes this YouTube video called Exposing Neverland, calling Anthony DeFiori a fraud, saying that it sounds a lot like Fire Festival, you know, that failed music festival that was a complete scam. It screams Fire Fest to me, and it just shows how much of a fraud this company really is. At one point, she censors out Anthony DeFiori's face during the video, which I'm not really sure why, like if she thought that it would protect her from a defamation lawsuit. This is why I talk about defamation so much on my channel because I feel like people don't really understand how it works or how to protect themselves properly. Um, so blurring out Anthony's face and name does not protect you from a defamation lawsuit. If the general public can discern who it is that you're talking about pretty easily, then even if you like make an effort to kind of obscure their face or whatever, like it's still not gonna protect you from a lawsuit. Like anyone who's like Anthony of Neverland. Yeah, okay, we know that's Anthony DeFiori. So you blurring out his face doesn't really protect you in that way. You know what I mean? We all knew who you're talking about. Anyway, and then Pearl comes forward and is like, yeah, I see all this is coming out and I'm glad to be done with that. A few other Queens come forward, but those are like the main players. I'm gonna finish my eye, honestly. I think it's working. So this is early 2019 and then in October, 2019, Neverland and Anthony DeFiori filed this lawsuit and they are seeking $5 million 
in damages. And guess what, my friends? This lawsuit is still ongoing. The parties have lobbed filings back and forth at each other for the last three years. Partially, this has gone on for so long because of continuances due to COVID-19, because it was filed in October 2019. A couple months later, COVID hits. Nothing in the law moves fast anyway, so this has just really gummed it up. Then the defendants filed a motion to dismiss, basically saying, like, you need to throw this out because it's not a valid lawsuit. Then that got continued because of various COVID-19 issues. And I'll admit, I have not worked in Illinois court before, but the docket's a bit of a mess. So I had a kind of a hard time figuring out what was going on. But as far as I can tell, the court hasn't even made a decision as to the motions to dismiss yet. And that's like the first step to the case. So sorry, I don't have any exciting updates for you there with that case, but it is still ongoing just languishing in Illinois state court. I shouldn't laugh, it sucks. I mean, like everyone is spending a lot of money on attorney's fees and not to take sides, but like these independent queens who like don't necessarily have the funds probably have spent a large fortune just trying to defend themselves from this lawsuit. But also like maybe don't say defamatory things about people or companies, okay? But also I get the desire to do so if you feel like you're powerless. Listen, my opinion doesn't matter in this. I'm just trying to tell the story. This is like, pretty ashy, but we're gonna go for it. I don't know why I'm showing you this, like you're gonna fucking follow this, like it's a tutorial. Tutorial. You can go in the very pocket of the eye right there. Right, and then she said she took the darkest one and just really got it into the pocket. Eye pocket. Ugh. Don't text me. If you know me, don't text me. If you don't know me, definitely don't text me. Trixie, I would never text this. you. She's got a lot more gradient happening in her makeup down here, and that's just... <laughs> <laughs> more than can be asked of me. Okay, so that's the big defamation suit, but then you also have Adore Delano, who's had kind of her own issues with her own management company, PEG, and they've been involved in kind of a back and forth lawsuit situation, okay? So Adore Delano was in the sixth season of Drag Race, and then very briefly in All Stars 3 before voluntarily leaving the show. She also, fun fact, was a contestant that got pretty far in season seven of American Idol. So after her success on Drag Race, she signed with PEG, PEG, an artist management company. PEG is pretty well known. I think a lot of queens work with them. Like it was probably a really big, exciting deal for her to be signing with them. So that was in 2013, but then by 2017, things started kind of going south a little. And she ended up filing a lawsuit against them in New York State Court. All right, let me try these brows. Okay, she's doing a lot of licking of her utensils. I shan't be doing that. Not even a straight line. We're on to something. Yeah, I feel like that's approximately the correct angle. I'm gonna just start drawing on hairs and then pray to the Lord that it works. I mean, I feel like that's how I fill in my brows anyway. I mean, <laughs> it's not good, but I don't know that it's bad. I'm not gonna lie, I'm um, <laughs> kind of impressed with my phone. Um, I'm gonna do the other brow and just pray that they are at least somewhat sisters, at least cousins maybe, okay? Again, Adore Delano, she sues PEG, and in that she alleges that she had made two $2.5 million over the course of the time that she was working with PEG, but she had only actually seen 300,000 of those dollars. Oh, I am terrified to do this. I'm gonna mess it up. So in her complaint, she alleges that she had a 20% agreement with PEG, meaning like they would take 20% commission for the work that she did and she would get the remaining 80%. And she says in the complaint that instead of just taking that 20% commission, they actually would siphon 50% off the top and then take their 20%. So she would actually only get 30% of the money that she was earning for any given gig. I don't have my glasses on. I can't even tell if I'm making a straight line here. I mean, like you can just see my brow, just my, my real brow. It's fine. I mean, like I already respected drag queens, but this is next level difficult. And I'm a damn lawyer. I did law school and everything. So she asked the court to award her $3.5 million in damages, um, including punitive damages, like to punish PEG for this. And she accused PEG of breach of contract, breach of fiduciary duty, meaning they had a duty to act in her best interest and they didn't. Conversion, which is a fancy word for theft and fraud because they made promises that they never intended to keep, according to her. Keep catching glimpses of myself in the mirror and this is a really wild look. Interestingly, she also made a RICO claim against them, which is like organized crime, like racketeering. <laughs> Listen, you gotta throw everything you got. She basically said like, you guys had a scheme of defrauding me that lasted over a long period of time and therefore 
you engaged in racketeering, and so you should be found guilty under the Racketeering Act. Well, we, we are having sun coming and going here today, so I apologize for the light shifts. We do what we can over here. Yeah, it's not exactly right, but it's not completely not right. You know what I mean? Okay, and then the parties move on to Discovery and apparently it was a mess. Like they were just squabbling back and forth amongst each other, which is the reason why I left litigation to begin with because it's literally just squabbling over like the form of questions and the way that documents are being produced and saying like, she did this and he did that wrong. Going to the judges though, the judge is like your mommy that needs to solve all your problems for you. Do I look like Trixie Mattel right now? Like I might. Oh, this is so good. Can you hear that? I don't know how people wear this kind of makeup every day. So a large part of the squabbling that was happening during the discovery phase was like PEG's lawyers saying that Adore Delano's lawyers were making some like just outrageous requests. And at one point, apparently, according to the court filings, they had requested documents from PEG's PayPal account. So they went directly to PayPal and asked PayPal for documents and PayPal did it because they were subpoenaed and they gave Adore Delano's attorneys, all of these documents, including like payment information about all these different queens that they work with who are like technically Adore's competitors. And they were upset about that, which I think makes sense. Okay, and then in 2018, PEG submitted a counter claim and an answer. After you get sued, you then reply with an answer saying like, here's all the things that I admit to or don't admit to. And at that point, you also have the chance to counter sue, basically saying like, I didn't do anything that they're claiming in their complaint, but since we're on the subject, like I actually have some complaints of my own related to this subject matter. So they came in and they were like, no, okay, we didn't do any of that. And actually she owes us money. And they explained that the way it actually works is she would get paid her 50% in cash or upfront at the gig the day that she performed. So that negative 50% that would show up in her account was what she had already been paid, then they would take their 20% from the remaining 50% and pay her whatever was left over minus their expenses, which were all written into the contract, which like makes sense when you explain it like that. I'm not saying that's exactly what was actually happening because I don't know and I wasn't there, but that's how they explained it. And then they say that she wasn't following her side of the contract because she was making YouTube videos and doing other gigs on the side and selling merch. And we are entitled to 20% of all of that income as well under our contract. And so she owes us money and she should pay us damages because she breached the contract with us. Okay, and so they squabble back and forth about this over the course of a, a number of months. Eventually they got to a point where they dismissed their claims against each other and each side covered their own attorney's fees. So it kind of sounds like it was a big misunderstanding maybe. I don't know, things like that happen behind closed doors so we don't really know what happened there, but yikes. That's a lot of attorney's fees for a few years of squabbling. Okay, now we're contouring. Ooh, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser in Deep Bronze. Apparently Maybelline has uh, partnered with Marvel, which doesn't really make any sense to me, but good for them. Is this one of those twist things? <gasps> wow, this is sending me. Do you remember back in the early 2000s, you would have the lip gloss that had like the teeny holes and then you'd twist it and the little pfft would poop right out the top and then you'd goop that on your mouth. <gasps> is that what this is? Whoa, look at that. What the fuck? She's got less of a defined, oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, she's dark. Okay, see here's, oh, you know what? That actually is about the color she's using. Okay, and then she did around her jaw, which like I already have a very feminine jaw, <laughs> but we can do more. This is dumb. I don't know who, for whomst is this tool. So she says, bottom of the lobe to corner of the mouth. I mean, sure. Gradient this shit out, like she told me to. I feel like I did it too low. That's okay. It is kind of weird to be doing this because her whole thing is she's trying to feminize her face, but I already, I already got that happening, so I don't know what this is really doing. Other than settling into my acne scarring. Gross. I don't know how she gets that line so straight. This is such an artistry. Look at that. Unbelievable. I'll try to make this as straight a line as possible. I was already obviously impressed with Trixie, but this is some next level 
difficulty. She is playing life on a, a different difficulty setting with this. For our third lawsuit, let's talk about the time that World of Wonder, which is Drag Race's parent company, sued some ne'er-do-well on the internet for infringing their copyrights. They were leaking content ahead of time back in 2018 during All Stars 3. So this happened right at the beginning of All Stars 3, which aired in 2018, specifically the Divas Live episode, during which each girl dressed up as a historical diva and then performed. The days leading up to the time when the episode was supposed to air, someone using the handle Reality TV Leaks was leaking all of this content, all of these previews of this episode that hadn't aired, including Ben de la Creme's performance as Julie Andrews and pictures of every single one of the girls' runway looks and RuPaul's final look during the judging period, all of which are really central to kind of the reason why people tune in to watch so that they can see all of these different looks unfold before their eyes. So having someone leak it ahead of time very understandably kind of ruins the value of the show and of that episode. So that happened during the Divas Live episode, but then it actually happened again for the next episode. And that leak actually revealed who was eliminated on the unaired episode, which obviously is like, one of the main reasons why people tune into the show. So the value of the copyright of that show is then diminished because they're not able to draw in as many people. The surprise is ruined, which is such a huge element of reality TV. I can't get it straight. It's like, I don't know how she gets her angles so straight when your face has curves on it. You know what I mean? It's like a subtle version. Like if, if Trixie Mattel uh, had a job interview. So the leak happens again for a second week in a row. And one week later, World of Wonder files this lawsuit. In the complaint, they sue does one through 10 because they don't know who this reality TV leaks person is. But they say that they filed these DMCA takedown requests, which are Digital Millennium Copyright Act requests where you talk to the website directly and say, hey, this thing that this user has posted is infringing on our copyright, so I need you to take it down. Usually they get taken down really quickly and it sounds like they did here, but they were trying to put out fires left and right. And then this reality TV leaks person made their Instagram account private so they could continue posting things to their 25,000 followers without it being publicly available, which still is copyright infringement, but made it harder for World of Wonder to do anything about it because they couldn't see it to file a DMCA takedown request to get it taken down. So they filed this lawsuit instead. And eventually Instagram suspended the whole account, but World of Wonder says in their complaint that if the court doesn't enjoin whoever reality TV leaks is from continuing to post, that they are going to just keep finding new ways to leak this information. And so this lawsuit was necessary. And they're asking the court to award them $150,000 per every case of infringement, which is typical. But when you think about it, that's a lot of cases of infringement. That's every image that is taken from the show, the video clips, the images of each separate dress, those are all separate counts of infringement. And they're asking for $150,000 for each count. Okay, so at this point she starts powdering her face and I'm sorry, Mary, but I'm not doing that, okay? Okay, we're doing line work around the eye. I just got this big giant white liner. Okay, so like I said, this lawsuit named Doe's one through 10, because especially when you're dealing with internet-based crimes, it is really difficult to figure out who it is that was doing the crime. So a lot of times what people do is they'll file the lawsuit, they'll name Jane or John Doe's one through 10 or whatever, and say in the suit, like, we don't know the identity of these people or person, but we're gonna figure it out during discovery. And then here, the judge granted them leave to work with Instagram, Reddit, Twitter, to try to get some sort of identifying information of the user accounts associated with this copyright infringement. So they started working with Instagram, Twitter, all of these people. But the problem is once you, even if you get an IP address or something from a computer, it's still really difficult to then pin the activity onto a very specific person. It all has to be circumstantial. It has to say, okay, this IP address is attached to this computer. This computer is owned by this person. We can show that this person probably was in possession of the computer at this time when this thing was posted. Therefore, through all of this circumstantial evidence, we can assume that it was that person that posted it. And that's assuming you can even get all of the identifying information, IP address or email addresses to find the person to begin with. Now we've got to do the eyelids. Do you see that texture? Ugh. They do say though, not to meet your favorite drag queens because it's a lot of like gross texture and not as 
glamorous as you think it's gonna be. I'd still hang out with Trixie. I think one of the things I'm struggling with is she has bigger features than I do, and so I keep trying to make it the same size as the thing that she's working with. But I'm just so dainty. <laughs> Okay, that works. Okay, so then what's really interesting is this lawsuit is filed and they start going down that path of discovery trying to figure out who this person is. And then suddenly John Doe's one through 10, they get a lawyer. This guy's name is Steve Vondren. He's registered his trademark name as Attorney Steve, which kind of seems improbable that you'd be able to get that trademark registered because it seems so generic, but I looked and it's a registered trademark, so good for him. Anyway, he's another YouTube lawyer. Hey, Steve. And he does a lot of copyright and internet-based law type work. He seems to really enjoy representing people who have been accused of violating people's copyrights by sharing things on the internet. Seems to be his area of expertise. Listen, there's a lawyer for everyone and everyone deserves a lawyer. And then looking at his website, there's a lot of pictures of him posing in front of like cannons and American flags. <laughs> so that's a vibe. Never once while I was in law school did I think that my legal career would lead me to here. And yet here we are. Anyway, so this attorney Steve guy, he enters notice of appearance, meaning that he's going to represent John Doe's one through 10. Again, they have not been identified yet, but he's their lawyer. <sighs> okay. We want isosceles triangles. And when you turn your head, it's like a whoosh, straight out. We want a whoosh, she says. That looks like an isosceles triangle from at least one angle, which is I think the point. Oh no, oh no. Here's the problem though, now I have this fine, fine tip liner that I gotta come in here and try to fill it all in. All right, let me, let me keep going with this liner here for a second. Okay, liner is done. We have gotten to the point where my phone does not allow me to unlock it with my face anymore. So that means we're going in the right direction. Now, Tracy has a black, shadow. I do not have a black shadow. And I went to Target looking for one, couldn't find a single black shadow. I remember back in the days, the early 2000s, late 90s, you go and there's a wet and wild shade, just a single one in anything you could ever want. So I don't have the black to like really smoke this out. So I'm just going to take a dark brown and see if I can at least do something. Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. Good enough. Like Trixie and I have so much in common. Midwesterners, good at singing, love Dolly Parton, multi-talented workaholics, earth sign babies. Yeah, that's something. Lips. Oh, I have the exact ones. I don't really know. This is so far, I look like I have a mustache. Now, I don't have a bright pink lip stick like she does, but I have <laughs> this tiny Kylie little sample thing. It's pink. That'll do. It's not meant to look natural anyway. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not the same exact shape, but it gets the, the point across. I, I didn't know I was something else. We're gonna go hotter, because that's not working for me. Okay, that works. I do feel like I look like a man trying to look like a woman. <laughs> There's something about the vibe. There's something about the look. Gender is so fluid, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, no one's fooling anyone with these lips, but that's not really the point, is it? She's kind of giving Trixie. I, I don't have, I just have these tiny little guys. They're not gonna do a thing, but let's try it. We're, we're already here. All right, I'm not stacking the lashes like she was doing, listen, these are gonna be on my face for about five minutes and then I'm ripping them off. So this is as good as it's gonna get. While we wait for this lash glue to get tacky, let's finish this story of John Doe's one through 10 and the reality TV leaks drama of 2018. So this guy, attorney Steve, he enters appearance, meaning that he now represents John Doe's one through 10, though weirdly in his appearance letter that he filed with the court, he called them Joan Doe's one through 10 more than once in the filing. So I don't know if that was like a wink to something that I don't know, or if it was just like a bold typo <laughs> made more than once. So they get this lawyer and then one month later, World of Wonder voluntarily dismisses these claims against Joan Doe's one through 10. And the negotiations are private, so we really don't know what happened, but like the Steve guy must be pretty good because that was pretty blatant 
copyright infringement. But they could have found out that it just really wasn't worth their time to go down this road because like bringing a huge lawsuit against someone that doesn't have the funds to pay the fines you're asking the court to impose on them means that you're gonna waste your money and time on lawyers and doing this lawsuit when it's like really not worth anyone's effort because this person, whoever they are, doesn't have the money anyway. So what's the point? And that could be something that attorney Steve brought to the table in negotiations. We just don't know because this is all just like private information that is not shared publicly. If I were a real drag queen, I would have bought the big fancy lashes, but that's just not on the cards for me, okay? I mean, look at that chunk of lashes. I'm not doing that. I think I'm done. This is what you get, okay? No wig, just me. How'd I do? What do you think? I don't think it's half bad. Do I think it's mostly good? No, but I don't think it's mostly bad either. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for partnering with me on today's video. Reminder to click the link in the description down below to get 82% off. That's a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month. Click the link down below. If you've been watching and you like this shirt, it's part of my merch. You can also buy that at the link in the description down below. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these two reaction videos that I made to uh with Trixie and Katya. Check them out now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>